I'm a physicist from training and uh, in the early 90s I did my PhD here at the University of Basel at this time uh, still on high TC superconductors and uh, graphite fullerenes and these kind of things and uh, at that time I also encountered that fabulous invention of, of Christoph, the force microscope and the scanning colony microscope and it was really very interesting to apply that to these uh, materials, to the high DC superconductors and the fullerenes. Then further on, in 96, uh, I moved to IBM Rüschlikon in the group of uh, Christoph Gerber to work on such so-called cantilever sensors. So this is already something which is different from the atomic force microscope. It's a new application. So if you take such a cantilever and modify its surface, then it can be operated as a chemical sensor. Molecules will absorb on this surface and this produces bending of the cantilever. This is our sensor signal. So we can operate these cantilevers also as chemical sensors. We then uh, had several tests with, uh, for example, thymol molecules, which produce a very large signal. But then later on, in the 2000 years, we moved to biology. Back in 2003, we had just finished the development of cantilever array sensors for the detection of volatile compounds in gaseous environment and had applied the technique to the detection of biochemical reactions in liquids. After the first success with hybridization of DNA oligonucleotides that was published in Science, the next challenge was the detection of proteins for a medical application. So we studied the detection of cardiac biomarker proteins for our nanotechnology paper. Okay, I'd like to uh, show you the equipment we use to do our measurements. We have uh, here like a, the setup with a controlled temperature controlled box. We have the liquid handling system here with a pump and a multi-way valve. Then here is the actual, the actual device sits here with a liquid handling chamber. The cantilever array is mounted in that chamber. And then here is a position sensitive detector to measure the position of the laser spots on the cantilever. And we can, so we can then close it. It's a, a modified refrigerator we use. And the actual measurement software we can see here on the on the screen. So I made a start an experiment to show you how the system actually works. So you have here you have here the actual deflection signals from a measurement. Then here is the temperature uh, recorded. And I can show you uh, what happens if actually the cantilever are the cantilevers bend? I do a temperature experiment where I briefly increase the temperature, and you should see that the temperature result, the temperature increase results in the bending of a cantilever. See the cantilever start to bend if you apply a heat pulse. This is the working principle. We have bending sig signals with the experiment while you have binding of the, of the molecules to the surface of the county. We used this idea to um, produce some kind of electronic nose, but for that purpose we need many of these cantilevers. We need an array of cantilevers, typically eight cantilevers and we put different polymers onto the surface of these cantilevers and then um, observe the response of this array of 
uh, country level sensors. So that was the first um, application as an electronic nose and we used that for example to detect different solvent molecules but uh, also um, breath samples so if you have some uh, patient which is suffering from a, a disease in the respiratory tract it can occur that certain um, molecules are present in the patient's breath so for this medical application we collected the breath of the patient and then we analyzed that in a measurement chamber with these cantilever sensors. We did this in the beginning with cantilevers, but uh, later on uh, we find, uh, found another interesting and compact form of sensor, which is um, similar in function as the cantilevers, but different from concept. So this is a piezoresistive membrane, which is held here by these four bars in red. These are piezoresistors, and the whole sensor is within this green frame. So here we have a, an array of eight microfabricated membrane sensors. Each one is um, modified with a polymer layer, and the gaseous sample will then um, diffuse into this polymer layer, it will swell and deform the membrane. So that is our signal and it is um, individual for each of these membranes. And from this recognition pattern we can um, analyze the gaseous sample. So this uh, board is powered by the universal serial bus so it can be directly connected to the computer for data acquisition and also for powering and we are close to uh, commercialization of this technique uh, together with uh, uh, the company that um, fabricates these sensors. So in our current project which was evaluated and funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation um, we work on patient samples, patient breath samples of head and neck cancer patients and lung cancer patients. With these membrane sensors, as it was uh, explained before, we can get um, a pattern of responses which is individual for each of the membranes and from these eight responses we can um, produce a plot a principal component analysis plot which allows us to characterize the breath samples. In this study, which was done in collaboration with the University Hospital in Lausanne, um, we investigated samples from patients having head and neck cancer and healthy control persons. This head and neck cancer is a special type of cancer which can be surgically removed and after that the patient is um, healthy again. So we collected samples before uh, operation, so this is in this cloud of points and after surgery this is this cloud of, of points. And for comparison here that's the cluster of the healthy individuals. You see that just by this operation, by remove, removal of the um, tumor, it was possible to observe that these uh, patients have been um, healed and uh, we can just demonstrate that using the breath of the patient. This is a completely non-invasive technique, it just requires one liter of breath of the patient. Here we have an actual cantilever array under the microscope. We have, as uh, Hans, my colleague Hans Peter Long explained before, we have eight cantilevers which can be individually modified. An actual picture of the cantilever array, an actual sample of the cantilever array. The basic idea behind this is to diagnose very specific mutations because recently different drugs were introduced which treat
answers in a very specific way. Um, for that purpose, one needs to know if a patient actually has these specific mutations which are causing the cancer. In the case of malignant melanoma, it's a specific mutation in the gene BRAF, which is targeted by very specific drugs, which really increases the treatment efficiency of this type of cancer. So how does the procedure work? We have like in our clinical pilot study we did recently, is we have like uh, samples from tissues, from biopsies, and we extract total RNA, which then is directly identified. So we have like, as shown before, we have like the cantilever array here are just two examples. One which has the probe, which is specific in our case for, for a single point mutation in this gene called BRAF. So we have like in our pilot study, it's a, we did a small double blind study and we were able from this is this we received from the Institute of Pathology by Professor uh, Kathleen Glotz. She provided us the samples and we have here from uh, six samples the, the actual status that was reported after we identified, after we measured the biopsies. We were, we were able to identify all the biopsies correctly. So the, the second project is, uh, involves breast cancer. And there, there is, again, like with BRAF, there is a gene involved which uh, makes that cancer or certain types of the breast cancer very aggressive. And this gene is called HER2. And again, there, is a treatment, there was a treatment developed which inactivates basically is HER2, the effects of the HER2 gene, uh, basically reducing or destroying the cancer. And here we have to see the same approach where we use uh, specifically um, functionalized uh, cantilevers to, take, to detect the HER2 gene. And we do all these experiments, we actually use total RNA extracted from biopsies, which makes it a very straightforward, fairly easy method to, to conduct. A battery of samples of our BRAF for the malignant melanoma uh, diagnostics as well as HER2 samples for the breast cancer detection.